Hello, everybody. Welcome along. We are reacting to breaking news in the championship. We have a new manager this very afternoon, and it is Mick Beal in to Sunderland. We had a brief flirtation with Mick Beal this time last season. Well, I think he'd already come and gone um, at this point in last season. Mick Beal himself had a brief flirtation with the championships. We'll talk about in just a second, as ever, with these uh, breaking news videos. I am off the cuff. I am unscripted. So if I do make any factual errors, feel free to correct me politely in the comments. So Mick Beal in to Sunderland. And it's an interesting job, this, because championship jobs don't normally come up with the team. I'm just looking at the table there. Three points off the playoff spot. Sunderland in seventh spot. Remember, they did finish in the playoffs last season. They also don't always come up um, at clubs who can draw a 40,000 home attendance. What I'm telling you is this is a good job that Mick Beale has got himself. And that good job was occupied up until recently by Tony Mowbray. Bit of a sense. I don't know that he was a kind of in a holding pattern there. Um, Sunderland came up with Alex Neil. I had to move quickly um, when Neil walked to Stoke very early in last campaign. Um, they took Tony Mowbray. There was all those rumours, wasn't there? After that playoff defeat um, at the hands of Luton, that um, the higher ups at uh, Sunderland were going to get short of Tony Murray. But they didn't. They waited until, well, sort of around 2021 into this season, and Mowbray was indeed gone. We cannot gloss over the fact that Sunderland were excellent last season. They jumped from League One straight into the Championship playoffs, which is not a done thing, really. Ended up losing to Luton, but a brilliant platform to build on this season for Tony Mowbray and now for Mick Beal. Um, and in terms of sort of squads and players, I've just got the foot mob app up there. And Jack Clark, as you can imagine, comes in as Sunderland's top player. He's one of the hot hands in the division. People will be looking at him in January as well in terms of a goal scorer there. Uh, Joe Bellingham um, is obviously um, due to family name, very highly rated, but having a good season as well. And the likes of Dan Neal, uh, Luke O'Neill. There's a good squad there. Always the feeling they were lacking a striker last season when they had Ellis Sims on loan and Ross Stewart, and then he was injured. And now he is sold and a Southampton player. So there is the sense that they are a sort of good squad of technical players, maybe lacking a goal scorer up the top end. But hey, maybe that could be remedied in January by one... Mick Beal. And do you ever get the feeling when you look at a football manager and think this guy must be a great talker because he just seems to be courted by everybody, Beal. And um, he seems to do very well in job interviews, doesn't he? So um, I first became sort of familiar with uh, Beal. He was working with Stevie Gerrard up at Rangers in Scotland. They won the title up there. Gerrard comes down to Aston Villa. Mick Beal comes with him. He's the, I don't know, what, what, what they call it, uh, assistant coach or head, no, not head coach, but they don't call them assistant managers anymore, do they? Assistant head coach, whatever the job title is, you tell me. Um, Gerard got to the end of um, his sort of first part season at Villa and Beal was then courted by QPR as a replacement for Mark Warburton there. And this is where everything just goes into complete chaos because then Neil Critchley, who's doing a fine job at Blackpool, goes to Villa. And within the space of about three months, all of these guys are going to be out of their jobs. But you would have to say out of Critchley and Gerard at Villa and Beal at QPR, Beal did really well. Um, he went and sort of played this 4-3-3 expansive football that we'd seen Gerard. Was it Gerard's football? Was it Beal's football at Rangers play with the high fullbacks and the tight midfield? Um, just say you'd like to see a 4-3-3 play. And QPR started brilliantly, didn't they? Did, in fact, top the championship table before Burnley kind of went off like a train into the distance, um, sort of going into the um, World Cup, and then they were just gone for the rest of it, weren't they? But it was QPR who were up there. And then we got the craziness, didn't we? We got Beal having just been at QPR for a couple of months linked with the Wolves job in the Premier League. And we got this crazy uh, situation where he does an interview, uh, maybe just a media faux pas 
um, a misspeak and says that he's not taking the Wolves job and he's at QPR to stay. That is until he gets offered the Rangers job. Uh, I think it was Joe Van Bronckhorst, wasn't it? He's out of Rangers. And Beal hightails it with QPR very well up the league, it has to be said. Um, and Beal goes off to Rangers. Now, forgive me. Uh, some people say I'm a championship connoisseur and I thank them for that. I'm certainly not a Scottish football connoisseur. So I can't tell you um, what Mick Beal did at Rangers, but it certainly didn't go well because he was out of a job. But what I will say is it really didn't go well for Stevie Gerrard after Mick Beale left him at Aston Villa. And it really didn't go well for QPR after Mick Beale left QPR. They plummeted down the table and um, in completely incestuous fashion, um, Neil Critchley actually went into QPR. I think they had, how many managers did they have last season? Because Gareth Ainsworth came in after that. So they ended up with three and they careered down the table and very, very nearly got relegated um, to the point where um, you still find them in the bottom three, maybe trending up now under Marty Sifuentes. But this is not a QPR video, although I feel we may be hearing from some QPR fans down there in the comments for sure. Look, I understand QPR fans' distrust of Mick Beal. I understand also football managers when they get a good opportunity taken. I think the big mistake that maybe the QPR fans haven't quite gotten over and that Mick Beale really made was that interview saying he'll never leave or whatever the words he used. Though. He was there for the long haul. I don't know. Can't remember exactly what he said, but he re he right royally put his foot in it, let's just say, um, by saying one thing and then doing the other. If he'd just done the other, he would be like every other football manager, um, every other player who gets, they're at a club, they get offered something bigger and off they go and take it and you know, uh, think of that what you will in a very competitive industry and a short career. Maybe you do blame them. Maybe you don't blame them. I don't know. That's not up for debate. What is up for debate is uh, how Mick Beale will likely do at Sunderland. I've already opened up the video by saying it's a good job, isn't it? Sunderland, by championship terms, are a very big club, aren't they? We always get asked about, oh, who's the biggest club in the championship? And we always end up reeling off um, the history and the fan bases leads. Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland, don't we? And he's landed one of those um, jobs. Maybe you wouldn't want the Sheffield Wednesday job at the moment, but there you go. Sunderland a bit different, and we're talking about ownership, aren't we? And um, the Louis Dreyfus family is in there, and they've got this kind of model of bringing in, well, just exclusively young, inexperienced players. But it does seem to be good fun, and it does seem to be working. And Look, whether um, we can label Beal as the snake oil salesman who can talk any owner or sporting director into giving him a job, there's obviously something there, isn't there? And the QPR team was good. And if we judge him purely on his work in the championship before, this could be a good hire. If the players buy into him in the same way that owners and sporting directors do, then this could be really good, couldn't it? I would suggest, I mean, looking at the championship as it is, we do seem to have these four teams at the top, the three year one parachute teams plus Ipswich do look to have been kind of gone, don't they? And it looks like there's essentially two playoff places below them. Obviously, West Brom have financial troubles, but they do have Carlos Corber on, who's a very good coach. And then um, you kind of look around it and uh, Haller in there with Liam Racine has just signed a new contract, hasn't he? Um, and you've got year two parachute teams like Watford and Norwich in the hunt. You've got um, maybe Blackburn and Cardiff where sort of Thomason and um, uh, Baloo are doing a good job. You might have Middlesbrough and Coventry who are in the playoffs sort of shifting up the table. I haven't mentioned Preston because they're on a poor downtrend, but they are actually just one point and one place back from Sunderland. But all of that is me saying Sunderland are in with a chance. They're a good match squad-wise for most of those teams, maybe Middlesbrough and uh, the Watford Norwich X kind of the year two parachute teams can sort of hold a candle to Sunderland squad. But in terms of a trend and where the sort of um, trajectory is going, you'd, you'd like the Sunderland job, wouldn't you, with a, with a young squad and moving up from uh, League One and getting into the playoffs last season. So I actually think this could work. And if Beal has learned his lessons in terms of what to say and what not to say, or does he care? Who knows? And the QPR fans certainly care then. Um, look, surely he knows more than he did when he was here last year. In short, 
It's going to be a very interesting one. I like what I saw in the short term on the pitch at QPR, maybe not in terms of that interview, but uh, this has got me quite intrigued and I quite like it. And can he get um, the impact that he got very quickly at QPR at Sunderland? If he did, look at it. One place, three points off the playoffs. If the trajectory is up, they're in the playoffs again. And Mick Beal is then three games away um, in the lovely end of season knockouts from being a Premier League manager, where he has been before as an assistant to Stephen Gerrard, obviously, at Aston Villa. Look, I like it. I think it could work. I think he's got the potential to be a good manager in the Sunderland job, for sure, is a great job to get. Let me know what you think down there in the comments. Mick Beal into Sunderland. Like I say, I'm off the cuff on these breaking news um, videos. You guys seem to like the energy and the um, sort of discussion style of that. So keep the discussion going down there in the comments. Give me your views on how you think McBeal will do at Sunderland. And if we can link a video, stay with the channel. Click up there and check out the hot takes video from this past weekend in the championship after you've left your comment about McBeal, the new Sunderland manager. Thank you for watching.